You know mass immigration is an important issue because you aren't allowed to talk about it. You get called names if you do talk about it, and those in favour of it will never back down, no matter what facts you give them or how rational your arguments. Talking about Islam is virtually impossible. Talking about immigration is virtually impossible. And so talking specifically about mass Islamic immigration is something of a suicide mission. A frank discussion of mass Islamic immigration is absolutely guaranteed to generate smears of racist, fascist, fascist and bigot in order to silence that discussion. The reason this tactic is employed so often is very simple, because it really works. Europeans have been successfully denied a discussion of immigration for decades. Here in the UK we are on to the third wave of immigration. The first wave was from the South, South Asia in the 50s and 60s. A large number of these immigrants arrived in the UK with little to no skills and had a little grasp of English. As the daughter of a Pakistani bus driving immigrant who arrived in the UK in the 60s, many might assume I would be for open borders. They are wrong, as I am all for closing our borders temporarily. When my father arrived in the UK, along with many other men and women of South Asian, Asian origin, there was plenty of work, there was also enough housing, they didn't rely on benefits, and there weren't a strain on the NHS. Yes, there was plenty of racism and ignorance towards the migrants, but crucially, they generally worked. They generally worked hard and integrated, and they were slowly accepted. It was a two-way street. Migrants generally proved themselves capable of integrating and working, and racists stopped being racist. In historical terms, this was done in the blink of an eye and is testament to the decency of humanity. The second wave of immigration was in the 80s, and this was mostly Iraqi and Kurdish men, and this was thanks to Saddam Hussein. These men had poor language skills, were uneducated, and had a village mentality, and came from an agrarian culture. Their country was being attacked by the West as they believed and they arrived in the UK believing we are the enemy. Immigrants are allowed to have a family life and these men soon called for their wives to join them. Their women were also lacking in basic English, uneducated and for them honour is above anything else. The men were happy for their women to remain like this. These men are told that Western women are slags and yet are all prompted to get themselves an English girlfriend who will show you what to do and teach you the English language. Their women did not mix with white women and today many of them still don't. Children born in that era have also been raised to hate the West and with a belief that white women are slags. Their loyalty lies with Iraq or Kurdistan. They romanticise it and go back home on holidays. The same can be said for the children born to Pakistani Mirpuri immigrants they too talk about back home, even though many of them have been born and raised here in the UK and may not even have been back home for a holiday. Thanks to the mass immigration that occurred in the 50s and 60s and the years that followed, we now have laws which protect those at risk of being forced into marriage or at risk of being killed in the name of honour. It only took the government 30 odd years to realise that cultures and traditions that were normal back home should not be tolerated in an advanced democracy and no longer ignored under the political correctness excuse. Allowing Muslims to make their home in the UK, whether escaping war and persecution or looking for a better life with free housing, benefits and medical care hasn't been without problems. There will be few people who have not heard by now of the term FGM, female genital mutilation, where girls as young as two and three years old are forcibly held down to have their vaginas mutilated, their clitoris, clitoris sliced off and labia sewn shut, allowing only a tiny hole for them to urinate and bleed from. This barbaric practice is carried out purely to destroy a female sexuality and to ensure she gets no sexual pleasure. And so once again, a new law was passed and it is now a crime to carry out FGM. <coughs> Even though we know what happens, even though we hear stories from survivors of this cruelty, nobody has been successfully prosecuted. Not one single person. 
The fear of being labelled racist for not understanding people's cultures is always stronger than the desire to protect those who are at risk from being mutilated. Britain is also now aware of the Muslim grooming gangs who have been allowed to rape young and underage girls with de facto legal impunity. In the majority of the cases, the paedophiles are of Pakistani origin, or to be precise, men from a Mirpuri background. We have also heard of gangs of Somalian, Iraqi and Kurdish men who have also been convicted of these horrific crimes. The names Rotherham, Rochdale, Bradford, Oxford and Newcastle have become destinations on a dystopian monopoly board of towns that have suffered a perfect storm of Islam, rape, political correctness, appeasement and cover-up. Vulnerable underage girls being raped by multiple men while those responsible look the other way for fear of being labelled racist. These are the towns and cities in the UK we have heard about and no doubt there will be many more. Yet nothing is being done, again because of that dreaded Edward, the R word, which puts such kryptonite fear into people. Not rape, but racist. Germany opened its borders and welcomed refugees, and it had no plan on how to deal with those that arrived. The vast majority of these refugees are young, able men, escaping poverty and looking to make a better life in a country where they, they will be housed and given benefits. It is not racist, nor is it bigoted, to demand that these economic migrants be returned to their country of origin. These migrants make it difficult to help the genuine refugees, the ones fleeing war and terror. The children who have been born into war and who have known nothing but the sounds of bombs and gunfire. These are the genuine refugees we should be helping in a controlled and responsible manner, not the armies of economic migrants. There was an immediate sustained moral and political panic that we have to house the occupants of the Middle East and Africa on the basis that they must all be refugees. But there is no equivalent moral or political panic that we must do something about mass rape committed by the Muslims. The only panic I can see is that we must cover it up or make excuses for it. Perhaps the rapists didn't speak good enough English or perhaps it's because of austerity. The surprisingly mild weather we have been having Perhaps the food in Rotherham is not to their liking. Cover up after cover up and children continue to be raped by adults in our country and we stand by and do nothing. Do nothing for fear of being labelled racist. We know integration by Muslims into many parts of the UK has failed and the ghettos have been created where the community leaders rule their kingdoms and elected councillors have to listen to what they say or else racist, bigot, Islamophobia. The usual words used to get their own ways, allowing Sharia law to prosper and flourish unchallenged. The UK has many problems as it is. There are many that are homeless, either living on the streets or in homeless units waiting to be rehoused. The strain on the NHS is also another problem, and with mass immigration it will only get worse. You would be a fool to think it wouldn't. We should be controlling who is allowed in, and we most certainly should not be labelled racist for wanting to do so. Young, able men arriving purely for economic reasons should be sent back immediately to deter future migrants from making the journey. These men are not fleeing war or persecution, they are bringing it. In an ideal world... In an ideal world, perhaps it might be wonderful to have open borders with everyone travelling as they please and causing no harm to each other. But only a fool believes we live in an ideal world, and only a fool believes we can achieve utopia by opening our borders to all.